We're now going to move on to some slightly more complicated 3D modeling to get this table leg shape. What I want to do first of all though, is just make one more adjustment to this image plane because currently um, the lines that we're gonna be following are kind of flickering in and out. Uh, and that's because this is currently unfiltered, this image. So what we'll do is just make sure we select it. We're going to go to the attribute editor, which for me isn't showing up. So I'm gonna press Control and A to make it pop up and make sure that you can see image plane shape one. This will show you the image. And you can see there's a texture filter here and basically what you need to do is just swap to a different one of these, whichever one works best for you. I've tested and I quite like the MIP map trilinear. So it makes the lines not quite as bright, but I can now see them all, all of the time, which is much easier to work with. What we need to do first then to create this shape is we're gonna start as we have done so far uh, with a cube. So we're going to create a cube in one more different way that we haven't done yet. To create our cube then, what we're gonna do is press and hold spacebar, and that's gonna bring up this menu here, which is known as the hotbox. And if you're a Maya Pro, this will give you access to the entire Maya user interface without having to have it up here and all around, which can give you more working space. If you wanna be a pro, this is the way that you need to get comfortable working. So from this menu, I'm gonna click and hold on create. If I don't hold, I won't be able to navigate the menus. So click and hold, I'm gonna to go to polygon primitives and create a new cube. You'll see that that's created up here because that's where the origin is. And what I'm gonna do first of all is just move this into place as close as I can get it. Now what I want to do is just give this some subdivisions. So you can see that these lines running up here are what allow us to change the silhouette of the shape. And we need to add those to this cube. And we do that by going into inputs, clicking on polycube four is what mine's called and we're gonna change the subdivision's height to 15. And you can see that now we have subdivisions running up the height of the cube. Whilst I'm in the channel box, I'm also going to rename it. So we're gonna call it table leg. There we go. And now I'm gonna use my resize tool just to get the basic shape of this. So I'll just try and get it pretty much so that it's high enough. This does not have to be perfect. It's just to get us close we can refine it later and then I'll probably just take it to about the thinnest point and we'll bring the rest out. What I want to do now is get into vertex mode. There are a multitude of ways of doing things such as this and this time I'm going to do it from the modeling toolkit. So it's open there in a tab or I can just click on this icon here to open the modeling toolkit. There it is and across the top we have these icons that allow us to change between different modes. This is object mode here. We've also got vertex, edge, and face mode. This is UV selection mode, which is more to do with uh, texturing. So for now, we're just gonna click on here. That will take us into vertex mode. You can now see the purple vertices, and we need to be able to select these in rows. And this is a really important thing I'm about to show you. Pay attention. If I was to just click on this one at the bottom here, and then used shift and click, I would have them both, and it would look like I had the whole row selected. But if I go into this view here, you can see that I've got these two at the front, but not these two at the back. If, however, I do a marquee selection like that, you can now see that I've got the front and the back. And for this to work, we must do that on each row as we work our way up. Otherwise, you're gonna have a bad time and have to redo it. So we're in vertex mode. We have our bottom row of vertices selected. What I'm also gonna recommend is that you use number four on your keyboard and number five on your keyboard to switch between wireframe and shaded mode just so you can see what you're doing. So now that I've got wireframe mode on, I'm gonna use a combination of my move tool. So I'm just gonna move that down a little bit. And my scale tool, I'm only gonna scale out on this axis like that. That then is gonna help us create our shape. So then I'll move up to the next row, get a marquee selection. And I just want to show you why I'm only scaling on the one axis. So you can see that that has gone out evenly. And if I scale on the one axis, it stays even. You can see that that's nice and even. If, however, I scale from the middle to scale on all axes, it's also gonna scale outwards, which we don't want. So in this view, it would still look right. But in this view, it looks oh so wrong. So it's kind of important that we don't do that by mistake. Let's now go into 
each of these rows and we're just going to create our shape. So we'll do the move tool first, get the row in place and then scale tool to get it to line up with our guide. So I'm just going to speed this up, let you guys follow and I'll meet up with you at the end. Just here you can see that I'm about to get an overlap, so if I want to move this next row up to here, I'm going to overlap them. That's a bad idea. So what I'll do is just get a few more rows and I'm just going to move them up together. So that means that I can avoid this overlap because I don't want this topology to start overlapping and getting messy. So that is our table leg complete. We can go back into shaded mode. I'm also going to just drop this back into object mode and we'll see how it looks in perspective view. So the silhouette's looking good. The width of this, or the thickness, is far too high for my liking, so I'm just going to change this as an overall shape. Something like that looks nice. And then what I'll do is just use my move tool to move it over to one side of the table. That looks nice. I am now done with this reference piece, so I can just select it, hit delete, and that will do it for this step. In the next step, we're just going to finish this piece off with a bevel and we'll add these pieces to a layer so we can hide them whilst we continue to build our skills. We're not quite done with these table legs yet. We need to put a little bit of um, embellishment on them before we duplicate it over. But the next step is going to be about setting up for that. So I will see you for that. Game Dev Academy is graciously supported by these absolute legends. If you'd like to offer your support, then check out our Patreon page using the link in the description below.